everyone, Fabian here from phpassistance.com with a tutorial on WAMP servers. What is a WAMP server? Well, a WAMP server is, uh, is pretty much a installation package which uh, is for Windows. It contains Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Uh, the purpose of a WAMP server is so that you can host a site or create a local environment so you can test um, PHP and other web server related um, code. Um, what can WAMP server do? Well, it not only can it test your, your product locally, if you decide that you want you wanted to um, link it to a dot com name or you know some kind of domain you can actually link it to and have it pointing towards your IP address and voila pretty much have yourself a web server where you can host your your sites um, now that we know what a web server is Let's get into what kind of software you can use. There are different types of softwares out there which you can use and you can download. I'm sure that if you were to go to uh, Google and Google WAMP servers, there are different uh, WAMP servers out there which you can install. The particular one that we're going to use on this tutorial is the one from Apache2Triad.net. Um, there's no particular reason why I'm using this one. I just feel comfortable with it. This is probably the first package that I installed and I said, hey, you know what? This is probably the easiest package for me to install. So I'm going to stay with it. And they have uh, pretty good support. They, ha they have a support forum. It comes with all kinds of good documentation. So, so be it. This is the package we're going to use. Uh, just go down to the downloads. Source Forge is going to load, and it's going to give you three options um, or four options. It looks like uh, um, to install and download different packages. Um, first one that you see up on the top is the latest release, which can includes uh, PHP 5 and MySQL 5. Um, the earlier version, which contained uh, uh, the legacy which is for 9x, anywhere from 95 to 98. Uh, that's for those packages. There used to be, or there still is, uh, PHP 4 and MySQL 4 packages, which are the staple, stable versions, which you can still download. Um, there, there's still manufacturers out there, there's still coders out there that are using um, PHP 4 and MySQL 4, but that is slowly turning around and everything is actually going into PHP 5 and MySQL 5. So you might want to download this package unless you have certain scripting or, or some, some scripts that you have laying around that require an earlier version of PHP and MySQL. Uh, with that being said, just click the download button which I'm not going to do at this point. I'll let you guys go through this step because I've already done that. And since I have my package ready on my local drive, what I'll do is I'll just head into my local drive. And this once you download it, this is what your package is going to look like. Go ahead and click on it. Once you clicked on it, just wait till it loads. Once it loads, it's going to ask if you want to start installing it. Just click Next. Um, destination folder. Destination folder is pretty much where you want your server to in be installed. If you're not particular with it, just leave it as is. Usually, I'll change it to a www or I'll change it something similar similar to um, um, like server and then just click next and then you want to input password that you're going to be using 
this password by the way is uh, your global password as it says up here your global password is pretty much your admin password to everything that's going to be installed in this interface including uh, MySQL and um, the admin panel for uh, the web server uh, here's the general public license you can go ahead and read through that once you've read through it just click agree and we'll let the package install now the package is going to take a couple of, of minutes or or so to install so while this is being installed since we know that PHP is going to be installed along with it and we need to somehow test it what we're going to do is we're going to go to our C drive and here I'll go ahead and create a new document a text document that is and we'll call it test.txt 